James Lynch here for MMA Surge. Happy to be joined by UFC middleweight Eric Anders. Uh, Eric, how are you today? Man, as always, doing well, prospering, and uh, having a good time. Good. I imagine you're back in Alabama, right? Because I know you were in Arizona for for the last camp. Yeah, yeah. I've been uh, been home for about a month now, and uh, you know, just enjoying the the house and the family time. And just got down to eat some chicken and waffles. Now that the itis catching it at a good time so. after the chicken yeah. and waffles, you must be in a great mood. So that explains mm-hmm. it. So. I, uh, I definitely agree with that. Um, but before we uh, preview this weekend's uh, UFC card, I want to talk about you. Obviously, unfortunate circumstances, what happened in that fight with Darren Stewart. What's the latest? Are they going to rebook that fight? Are you looking past uh, you know, Darren at this point? Uh, what, what's the latest in terms of what you've heard from your management? Um, I don't know. It's up in the air right now. And, uh, man, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm down for a rematch. I'm down to move on. And, you know, it's really whatever name comes across that contract at this point. Okay, yeah, because obviously you're ready to go, right? No injuries, anything like that. Like, you could probably fight pretty soon, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm healthy as a horse and, uh, you know, kind of itching to get back in there, actually. I know the result sucks. We don't have to talk about it. It was a mistake. You know, I know you've made, you know, several interviews and several statements as to what happened. It was a momentary lapse in, in judgment. But how did you feel in there? Because I thought you looked pretty good leading up to that. Maybe one of your better performances in, in recent memory. Um, Man, you know, I, I feel like I'm... uh was the Eric Anders of old, you know, the, uh, the guy when he first made his, U- uh, his UFC debut, you know, the fights were wild and chaotic. And, um, you know, I feel like I'm back to that. And um, I think that's more my style, not really just like, not just boxing, not just, you know, standing toe to toe and, you know, trading punches and whatnot, but making exciting wild fights, that, you know, are all over the place so you know that's kind of my style and uh, the way i like to fight and uh you know, i had a lot of success at it so i you know i think we're going back to that fighting style and and i'm sure part of that too was you know the switching camps training at fight ready i imagine the next camp are you planning to do down there with eddie chai fight ready yeah i mean it's amazing the uh, the progress that i made um just in like the eight nine weeks that i was there last time so just imagine with another eight nine weeks uh, is going to be like so yeah I'm excited um, I think the the progression is hard not to notice you know um, that's probably the main thing that I took away from this last fight you know I had more people telling me how much better I looked in that in this last fight than I have in my entire career so you know a lot of positive feedback from uh, from everybody good to hear man that's awesome uh, by the way uh, since we mentioned it in the last interview uh, did Vitor Belfort ever get back to you about the football stuff with his kid uh, have you talking uh, spoken to him since Nah, I haven't really talked MMA or to anybody in the MMA community since I've been back. Really, I've just been kind of relaxing and taking it easy, and uh, man, just enjoying the, the civilian life. Really. Well, I appreciate you having me, uh, taking some time here today uh, with me here to talk some fights. Uh, we do have a card coming up here. It is UFC on ABC2. Just want to highlight a few fights on the card and just get your pick and sort of your analysis on this one. We've got first uh, sort of a notable fight. Daniel Rodriguez taking on Mike Perry right now in FanDuel. Uh, Daniel Rodriguez, the favorite at minus 188. Mike Perry, the underdog, plus 152. Who do you like in that fight? Because it's kind of an interesting one in the welterweight division. Uh, it's super interesting. Both of these guys have very similar fighting styles. They both move forward. Um, I think that uh, D-Rod is probably the more technical fighter, but he's also super game, too. But uh, Mike Perry, you know, he's, he's got that dog in him, and you're really going to have to take him out of there. And I think he's only been finished once by Jeff Neal, who's super fast twitch. Um, I don't think that D-Rod is, like, that fast, but he's shown that, you know, he kind of picks up the f- pace as the fight goes on, so... I don't know. I like uh, I like Mike Perry in that one, but uh, you know I could definitely see D Rod taking it as well. So Andrew's going with Mike Perry. I'm going with Daniel Rodriguez. Uh, part of it too with me, and this is something we didn't discuss, is the outside stuff that's going on with Mike Perry. I mean, he's had some issues with you know a lot of things, a lot of weird uh, you know video posts and stuff. I don't know where his head's at. I know he's a new dad, but uh, yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll see what happens there. But um, yeah, I, I think that's, Rodriguez. That's nothing, that's nothing new for Mike Perry though. He's always been a wild one, and has always seemed to kind of have himself in you know, halfway in and halfway out of trouble. So I think that's just him and, you know, the kind of lifestyle that he lives.
Okay, well, fair enough. But I will also point out he missed weight in his last fight against Tim Means. And remember, he's eating cheeseburgers and all this stuff. And kind of it just it, to me, it kind of looked like he's like fighting's not really on his mind right now. And I mean, this is a great fight. And maybe this is the fight that does it. But I'll have to go with Rodriguez just because I think he's looked a bit better. I know he's also coming off a loss heading into this fight. But uh, I think Rodriguez gets it done. Although I will say that fight against Dwight Grant a couple fights ago, that could have easily gone the other way. I think the referee kind of messed that one up a little bit. But yeah, uh, sure. still, we're, we're going uh, opposite ends on this one. Okay, next fight. I'm curious to get your thoughts on this Nina Ansaroff returning back from action uh, back, sorry not back from action back from being a mom she's been off uh, all of 2020 uh, her last fight was in June of 2019 uh, that lost to Nina Ansaroff she's taken on Mackenzie Dern who was very active in 2020 um, she was uh, fighting three times actually last year uh, Ansaroff the favorite here minus 115 Dern minus 105 on FanDuel who are you liking in this one uh, I'm going with Mackenzie Dern you know she uh she likes to crack. She's super aggressive, and then if the fight hits the ground, which all her fights hit the ground, it's you know all but over with, you know. So uh, I think Mackenzie Dern by by submission. I, I like Dern in this fight as well. It's not even her her ground game as well. Her striking's really improved under Jason Perillo. I think uh, sure. even if it stays standing, she'll look good. My issue mainly is it's more of a fade on Ansarov in this fight. Thirty five years old, had didn't fight at all last year. Coming off, you know, obviously like. You know, given birth, it, it can't be easy. Dern knows that herself. I asked her about that yesterday. She feels like it could be a factor. But, uh, yeah, Dern younger. I think she's catching answer off at a good time. I could see her getting it done here. Uh, maybe keep an eye on this line because if she gets the plus money, that might be worth uh, even more value than just minus 105 in this one. So there you go. We're both going uh, Mackenzie Dern on that one. How about the co-main event? Really interesting fight in the featherweight division. Sadiq Youssef uh, taking on Arnold Allen. A pair of featherweights looking to break through into that sort of contender spot. Sadiq Youssef, the favorite right now, minus 144. Arnold Allen, plus 118. Who are you liking in this fight? Uh, I'm going with Super Sadiq, you know. Um, guy's got phenomenal cardio, power. Uh, you know, his ground, I mean, his uh, his striking, you already know. He's been knocking everybody out. And uh, I don't know much about his ground game, but, you know, I know he's got good takedown defense and whatnot, and uh, he's a dog. So, uh, Arnold Allen, he's British, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he trains at a TriStar, though, actually, which is interesting. Oh, okay. All right. So, you know, he's well coached. I'm sure uh, for us, Ahab, you'll have a good game plan for Sadiq. But man, I just think that guy's super hard to beat, especially at that weight class. So I'm going with uh, Sadiq Yusuf. Yeah, a couple of reasons I'm going Sadiq in this fight. Number one, I was really impressed with that win over Andre Feely. Andre's a gamer. I mean, Andre's fought the who's who in that division. And to go out there and beat him the way he did, very impressive. Sadiq's been a little bit more active. I know he didn't fight a ton last year because of visa issues. But, uh, you know, I know he's ready to go just from speaking from him. And with Arnold Allen, uh, you know, hasn't fought that much. Seems like he fights like once a year. A lot of his wins are against guys that are no longer in the UFC, including Nick Lentz, including Gilbert Melendez. So I think overall, Sadiq's fought the better competition. So I like Yusuf as well in this fight. Uh, I give him the slight edge just like the odds indicate. So I think he goes out there and takes care of business. Probably by decision, though. Arnold Allen, never been finished in his career. I'll, I'll take uh, you know Sadiq by decision in that one. Okay, main event. Got to get your thoughts on this one. This is uh, in your division. Marvin Vittori, Kevin Holland. Of course, Kevin Holland coming off that loss to Derek Brunson a few weeks ago where he was completely dominated. Marvin Vittori coming off that win over Jack Hermanson in a very impressive performance back uh, late last year. Marvin Vittori right now, one of the biggest favorites on the card. Minus 325. Kevin Holland, the comeback, plus 250. Which way are you going on this one, uh, Eric? I think Marvin Vittori is the only way to go outside of a knockout, which, you know, I think Marvin Vittori is probably pretty hard to knock out. Um, you know, he probably implements the same game plan as, uh, as Derek Brunson takes him down, but I think he'll be a little bit more active on the ground and, you know, with ground and pound and submission attempts and whatnot. You know, he not necessarily more of a risk taker, but he's just more active on the ground and, you know, he's going to come forward and march forward and, you know, take it and give it. So I think that Holland only has the one way to win. And I don't even think uh, he wins by points. I think he has to knock Vittori out to win. But uh, I think Vittori is probably one of the more solid, like bigger middleweights. So um, and then once he gets his hands on Holland, uh, he shouldn't have a problem taking him down um, and uh, submitting him. So a couple like optics about this fight that I think are interesting. Number one, Holland's taking this fight on short notice. It was supposed to be Darren Till. So, you know, Holland going in there, um, there there's sort of a, you know, this is what I've said. I, I think there's sort of a, I, I got nothing to lose type mentality here for Holland because he's already talked about going to 170. He's not a contender right now. He has an opportunity to get back in that contender spot by beating Vittori. But really, he's already said, I'm going to 170. How dangerous is that for Marvin Vittori? Because Vittori has to win this fight if he wants to continue on that path of getting a title shot, whereas Holland... 
he's got a height and reach advantage in this fight. He's got, you know, like I said, he's, he's got, uh, he's got other plans and that is, you know, going to the welterweight division. How crucial is that sort of mentally for, for both fighters? Um, man, you know, Vittori, I think he's going to fight with that chip on his shoulder, regardless of what the situation is. And as far as Kelvin Holland, like Martin Vittori is like number four in the division, five mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Kevin Holland can say what he wants, but a win over the number four guy that puts him in the top 10 uh in the division i think so i mean he could say what he wants but a win here is uh, is is important for for kevin holland even if he is going down in weight so you know i i just i just don't see how much improvement he could have made in the two three weeks since he last fought That's true. Uh, in, the, in the wrestling department so I, I seriously doubt uh he has although like he's always seemed to have good cardio so i don't think that would be an issue i just think that you know, he just doesn't know how or care to get up when somebody takes him down. So, you know, I think it's, uh, that's uh, Marvin Vittori's the easiest path to victory. Another thing I wanted to ask you about, and this is sort of my last question on this fight, um, Kevin Holland likes to talk trash. We saw that in the, in the Brunson fight. Even when he was losing, he was still talking right up till the final bell. Marvin Vittori is a bit of an emotional guy. He's Italian, right? I mean, and, and I mean that in a good way. He's very passionate about what he does. But we've seen him you know, get upset. Remember that whole incident, uh, what was it, last year, a year before, with Carl Roberson in the hotel? Like, Do you mm-hmm. think Kevin Holland can get under Marvin Vittori's skin? And if so, do you think that throws him off his game at all? And if Vittori is a gamer, I mm-hmm. think that's... Uh... Like emotional is probably not. I don't know if emotional is the word to use for Vittori. Like, because it's not like when somebody talks trash, he gets upset. You know, I think that you know he lost his temper with uh, Carl Roberts uh, Sanchez. You know, he did the whole you know hit smacked him in the face or whatever. Did the look down and you know hit him in the face. He kind of lost his temper, but I don't think that like he lose some guys when they lose their cool. Uh, and they rage, you know, kind of affects their their uh, their thinking and stuff like that. But I don't know if that's the case with uh, Marvin Vittori. I think he probably lives angry, you know. I've only seen him twice where he wasn't yelling at somebody. So um, uh, the one time that he wasn't yelling at somebody was, you know, after he had just won a fight. So how could you be mad, you know? So I, I think this is kind of like the zone that he lives in. So I don't think it affects like his – like his cardio or his decision making or anything like that. So that's just, you know, probably just the way he is. Back to you. Uh, what's the plan for the rest of the week? Just training, keeping busy, waiting for that phone call? Yeah, you know, like I said, I'm just uh, resting, recovering, and uh, yeah, just doing a little cardio, lifting a little weights, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Well, I was no, going to say, with your wife, good. I couldn't imagine you just sitting around. She'd probably be getting you up and making sure you're eating good, right? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, we're eating good. Like I said, I just had some chicken and waffles uh, before we got on the phone. And, um, yeah, man, just just enjoying life, you know. Um, even though I, I didn't win the fight, I felt like I won the fight. It was well on the way to being over with. So, um, yeah, we're just, we're just enjoying the downtime and, and kicking it. Sam Darnold got traded yesterday. What did you think of that? Man, nothing surprises me in the NFL anymore. I know, man. right? It's crazy. Getting traded. And, but the, the Jets, they've traded away all their first-round draft picks since like 2011 or something like that. So it's no surprise to me why they have the first pick, you know, why, why they're the worst team in the NFL because you haven't built your franchise around anybody. You get rid of everybody too quick. So whatever, you know, maybe they need a change in the front office before they need like a, like per, like a player change. Yeah, I'd agree with you there. Eric, thanks so much for doing this, man. Really appreciate it. Anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media you want to plug, I'll give you the last word. Uh, man, you guys can follow me, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Eric Anders. Uh, shout out to uh, NutraFX um, and uh, Rev Gear for you know keeping things moving and uh, supplying me with great gear.